Hey, and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh, and there's Chuck, and there's the special uh, but normal producer Dave here. <laughs> I just mean special, like, in a way that, like, sure. everybody's special in all the right ways. That's right, in a romper room sort of way. That's exactly right. And I'll tell you something else that's special, Chuck. Something very special happened on August 20, 2014, over the um, magnetic North Pole of this here planet Earth. For the first time in the history of humanity, we documented what's known as a space plasma hurricane. Isn't that neat? It's neat. And uh, this is something that wasn't fully, um, well, it was documented here and there, but Nature Communications uh, wrote about it in February of this year. So I think it got a lot more attention um, seven years after the fact. Uh, almost seven years. But yeah, this was, like you said, above the North Pole. Uh, it happened over a few hours. Um, the result of what happened up there was there were some satellites that were disrupted. Um, the geomagnetic field got a little hinky for a little while. But back here on Earth, uh, well below the ionosphere, we, we were just like, I don't know what I was doing on August 20th, 2014. I could probably go back and look. It was that unremarkable, about, though. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about space hurricanes. No, because no one really noticed. Because in August, that's a pretty terrible time, typically, to see the auroras, um, or at least the aurora borealis, uh, because the day uh, the days are so much longer than the nights, so you can't really see these these fantastic light displays. But had you been able to see the aurora borealis that night, you would have been knocked right out of your your hiking boots, basically, because this was, a, again, a space hurricane. It doesn't happen every day, and we don't really understand fully how they happen or why, but they're called space hurricanes because it, from what we saw, from what this Nature Communications paper from February 2021 said, um, it bears a striking resemblance to a a, a tropical hurricane or a cyclone or an Atlantic hurricane where there's a mass of uh, energy basically spinning around a calm center. There's a million differences between, a, a, say, an earthbound hurricane and a space hurricane. But the fact that they're, they're, you could even call both hurricanes is kind of startling. And, and actually, it seems to me, Chuck, kind of it, like it's presenting like a new pioneer in, in scientific research now. Like we're like, okay, how does this happen? Where do these come from? What is going on here? I agree. And I also have to admit I was distracted for a minute because I was obsessed with trying to figure out what I was doing on August 20th, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever figure it out? No, because I didn't open up my calendar and go back. But I did find out that it was a Wednesday. Okay. So I know we probably weren't recording this. No. And it was a year after our TV show aired, which aired over the course of what, like 10 days? <laughs> yeah, you were probably in hiding still. <laughs> May have been. Yeah. But I think that's probably a good place. No, we can't break yet, can we? Sure we can. It's a short stuff. If ever, anything goes. All right, let's take a break then. I'll get my head back in the game. Okay, Chuck, you took a salt tablet, you walked it off, and now your head's back in the game, right? My head's back in the game. Where did you leave off? I left off about how space hurricanes are basically presenting a, a new pioneer frontier in, in space research because yeah. we didn't really know they existed. We suspected something like that existed, but we certainly had no idea that there were arms of plasma that that spun around at s staggering speeds, uh, a calm center. But, but it's not wind we're talking about. These aren't clouds. This isn't water vapor. Like, this is plasma. These are ions and electrons and, and just incredible energy and magnetism. It has nothing to do with the earthbound hurricane, and yet it bears a striking resemblance to it. It's very bizarre. Yeah, it is interesting in that there is uh, what you can think of as precipitation in both in that we get the rain on Earth, and there's this electric precipitation. Mm -hmm. And it's super interesting that there is an eye and that they spin and have arms, Yeah, which, you know, uh, 
obviously is why they were called hurricanes. I know there was one meteorologist in here who in the How Stuff Works article that said he thought they might have been called space vortexes initially because it was over the North Pole and resembled the polar vortex. <laughs> but they went with the space hurricane, I guess, because it's a little sexier probably. Um, one of the other uh, ways that they're different is the sheer, well, from where they occur, obviously, the Earth's atmosphere um, from, I think, ground zero, or we should probably just say the ground. The surface? <laughs> the, from the ground to about five to nine miles up is where you're going to find an Earth hurricane. Yeah, that's the uh, troposphere. Whereas, yeah, whereas the space hurricane is in the ionosphere, like I mentioned early on. Mm -hmm. And then the sheer size. Uh, this one, I think, was about 600 miles wide, right? Right. And Which it's, is huge. It is. That's, that's a good size. It's about double the size of like a giant Atlantic hurricane. Yeah. And it's spun really fast, 4,700 miles per hour, about 7,560 kilometers per hour, um, just whipping around. And again, there's a calm center where this activity is not happening where this rotation is taking place, uh, or is the, the, the center where, uh, for the rotation. And we have a fairly good handle on hurricanes. Our, our explanation in our hurricanes episode notwithstanding, science generally <laughs> understands how hurricanes here on yeah, Earth we, works. Humans. Right? <laughs> Space hurricanes, again, this is new. There was, there was one, I read an article about a guy who said, yeah, we're pretty sure one of these happened like 50 years ago, but we didn't have anything like the instrumentation today, so we couldn't document it. This is the first one we've actually documented, so this is like brand new to us. But rather than wind and water vapor and clouds, a space hurricane is made of plasma. And plasma, as we've talked about many times, Chuck, is the fourth state of matter, where it's like solid, and then you make it a little more energetic, and it becomes liquid. A little more energetic, it becomes gas. Well, even more energetic than that is plasma, where there's it's such high temperature. And, of course, temperature is just another measure. Are you thinking about where you were on August 20, 2014 again? No, I'm thinking about how plasma is the umami of states of matter. Okay, good enough. <laughs> as long as you're thinking about plasma right now. I'm with you, man. But it's so energetic and it's so high temperature, which is a measure of energy, that like the electrons and the um, positively charged nuclei just get ripped apart and spread apart so that they don't interact. So you just got this um, electrified, magnetized incredibly hot energetic gas and that instead of clouds of water vapor are what make up the arms of the space hurricane right and as far as the conditions of when this happened in 2014 uh, if you remember from our not the sun episode <laughs> but uh what was it on solar winds we did one on space weather is that it probably when we talked about the the 11-year cycle of the sun. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that... Well, we probably talked about it in both of them, but yes, yeah, space space weather. I think it was better in space weather. I agree. Uh, so at, at the time in 2014 when this happened, still don't know what I was doing that day, but on that Wednesday, the sun was at its maximum of that 11-year cycle that we talked about uh, and was also at a time of what the uh, AccuWeather people called low solar and otherwise low geomagnetic activity. So... The people uh, that they interviewed from AccuWeather said that it did resemble an Earth hurricane and that there was uh, – there's usually like quiet – like the calm before the storm, the quiet conditions, mm -hmm. and it was the same in space. Although now I think we're having uh, – we're not sure if it was the maximum of the 11-year cycle set against low geomagnetic activity or if it was the minimum, and this is a misprint. Oh, I see. I see. So I see. Um, so what I understand is that, that yeah, can, whatever it was, the upshot is that was the calm. space weather was <laughs> calm. Right. Like whatever normal space weather we get from the sun, it was generally calm, which is weird because you'd think that it would be that solar wind from the sun that would cause this kind of thing. But they're like, no, we, we actually have no idea where this thing came from. And the fact that it isn't related to the solar cycle, that 11-year cycle, makes them think that it's probably a little more common than we realize. And now that we know what right. to look for, we're going to yeah. start noticing them. So they think maybe it has to do with a change in the magnetic field lines where one was like ripped apart and then connected with the neighbor, releasing a tremendous amount of magnetic energy. That's one of the explanations I've seen. There's a few others too. 
Yeah, and you know the um, to borrow your phrase, the upshot is is that it's really not going to matter much to us on Earth. Uh, I guess if we had any kind of um, space exploration going on during one of these, that probably wouldn't be great if you were up there. Right. Just a guess. But they kind of come back with a line that you always hear when it's something that could disrupt satellites is here on Earth, it might mess with your GPS. (laughs) I feel like that's always what you hear. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, whenever there's satellite interference, it can be problematic. I mean, that was a big part of the um, space weather episode, too. But yeah. And Y2K, am I right? Yeah. Man, we need to do an episode just on that. I can't wait to do that. Really? Yeah, we're going right, to, sure. okay? Yeah, yeah. The 90s are back. Are they? <laughs> From what I understand, yeah. <laughs> you know, a new 70s sort of discotheque bar is opening in Atlanta this weekend. So oh, sweet. When things are feeling really good, I think you and me and Emily and Yumi should all go get our Studio 54 on. I would love that. I'm going to go get some replacement goldfish for my platform <laughs> shoes. Great. Because those other ones have been dead for years. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a little gamey, I have Ew. to. You got anything else about space hurricanes? Nothing else. Look out for them. It's the new thing. Yeah, just this is going to get a follow-up when we understand them a little more because they are amazing. So until then, this was your introduction to space hurricanes. I hope you enjoyed it. Chuck hopes you enjoyed it. Dave hopes you enjoyed it. And, sp- and space stuff, <laughs> short stuff, is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.